<laughs> Welcome to another fantastical episode of the Throne of Angels video blog. As always, I am your host. No, I'm not smashing on the table this time. How about the floor? We'll just let it go. I am your host, Derek Osborne, here to show you a world in miniature. This time, in a graveyard. Specifically, Project Graveyard. So this is a project that I have been collecting parts for for years. <laughs> Literally years and years and some more years. Right? My, my graveyard has evolved from my War Machine days where it was the Crix Necro Factory from Gale Force 9, a pair of really small mausoleums, and a dozen random gravestones. And these are mounted on 60 millimeter Citadel bases. That, that was my graveyard for the longest time to something much larger, right? This is a big project and a ton of work ahead of me. Specifically, let's talk about a few different things, right? I've got the, um, the Garden of Moore, right? Moore, the god of the undead in the old Warhammer universe. This is a great kit. The value for dollar for this kit in regards to Games Workshop is insane, right? I think it's still available. I haven't looked for a long time, but I think you can still get this at gamesworkshop.com. Um, well, it's games-workshop, but y'all know that. I believe this is still available. If not, I know you can still get it on Amazon. If I remember, I, I spent, I think, 40 or 50 bucks for this. It really was not that expensive for what's in it, and we'll take a look at some of the parts up close and personal uh, in a little bit. But for what's in it, it is a fantastic buy. Now, what do I have in front of me outside of my old graveyard stuff? Well, if you guys remember, I don't know, a while ago, we took a look at the burned down church or the broken out, busted up, torn up, beat up, thrashed, thrashed, I like that word, thrashed church from uh, Frontier War Gaming. We'll take a look at it right quick again, because this is a beautiful piece, right? It's got removable roofs. So you can actually get inside and use it and play with it. Both sides, that is. Right, you can make something happen with this bad boy. Now, obviously, it needs some paint still. I haven't done that. But since Project Graveyard is still in its quote-unquote infancy, we won't hit that yet, uh, probably for another, I don't know, month or so. We have this nice little black set of runes here. I don't know how well you can see it, but we'll look at it uh, here in a second. I don't remember where I got it. It's primed black, but it is gray because it's got so much dust on it. It's been sitting for such a long time. I actually busted it off of the old base and everything that I had built for it. Because it never got painted, and it was this big, ugly pink foam thing, and I didn't like it. And so I took it off, and I, I basically have been carrying it around in this box for a couple of years. Some stuff that we looked at a while ago from our friends at Tom Marillion, right? We have a mausoleum, uh, a couple of large gray markers, or... Um, I don't know what you want to call them. And then a couple of pillars up here. Malice RPG, right? We've got a pillar set and a big arc from our friends over there at Secret Weapon Miniatures. And then we've got this great graveyard set, the cemetery set, four mausoleums, a bunch of metal fencing, right? We'll take a look at this stuff up close again here shortly. Tons and tons of gravestones. Our entryway, our center arch, archway, entry arch, arch entry, arch, it's our arch entry. Uh, and again, like I said, these mausoleums, these, we'll look at these really close, they're three part mausoleums that go together or that need to be assembled, that need to be, they definitely need to be assembled, and painted. Got a couple of the old school confrontation gargoyles, right? These will go somewhere cool. Those are the legacy version, the re-release that uh, Simon sold a while back. And then I have a model, we all have a model, that has no story, no history, but has been with us forever, right? This is, this is that model for me. I believe this is a Reaper model. I don't know for sure. I could probably go look it up, but I really don't care. I've had this model ever since I can remember. It has always been on my desk. It's always been on my light, which is right over there on my painting desk. Since I was, I don't know, 15 years old. I don't know where I got it. I don't know where I came from. I don't know the story behind it. But it's always been there, right? So he deserves a big 
center point right now. Probably make a fountain, and this guy will be my fountain topper uh, for the graveyard. But you know, of course, you can't have a fountain that actually works in a graveyard. It's got to be all nasty and gross, and that'll be a fun project. Maybe we'll do a, a project video for that one just specifically. But he'll be that kind of centerpiece topper that goes like right in the middle because he deserves it. Right? That's the model. Everybody's got one. Everybody's got one. I know you guys have one. You have a model that has always been on your desk or that has always been a part of your collection. And you have no idea where it came from. That's this guy. He's my no idea model. All right. Oh, I forgot this stuff over here. Can, uh, can you guys see this? Well, these guys. Some old confrontation stuff. More old con This is original. These are metals, right? This is the original blister. Uh, for some confrontation pillars, right? These are the Guardians of Eternity. I've got the uh, Heralds of Mercy and the, um, oh, what are these guys? Well, I don't read French, but I'm going to give it a shot. Calms of Disaster, I believe that's what these guys are called. So I've got those. Um, very hard to find, very hard to get your hands a hold of. I've had them forever. Uh, you know, I bought them new off the shelf in the late 90s, so they've been part of my collection, like I said, for a long time. They will probably get a little two-part mold action, and I will just use them as uh, masters to make, you know, some extra columns or to make some extra decorations, or I might not even use them at all. Who knows, right? This will be kind of a little evolution-type project for me, but I'm going to have a good time with it. So, let's take a quick look at some of these pieces up close and personal and then uh, you know we'll come back and wrap it up we'll go ahead and start with the front of the cemetery right we got a couple of columns here again these are the two columns from Tom Aurelian we looked at these a while back but might as well look at them again because they're cool right I mean this is a good size little column this guy is uh, probably 45 millimeters goes on top of a nice little simple base right it's simple all the way around but again it's a two-part piece Fits on there nicely. Got uh, King on the left, the Queen on the right. You know, she may not be a Queen, but we'll call her a Queen. Couple of sweet columns. <clears throat> now we've got this cemetery, right? So this is the original archway from the Old Glory out of print graveyard set, right? This is a big. Pretty solid piece of resin. Oh, look, bubbles. Yay. Nice clean cast, right? I mean, I'm not trying to sell you guys on anything. we got, obviously, a little cleanup to do here. Because you guys can't get it anymore. But it's still cool. It's fun to look at. We'll look at a couple of the mausoleums. Again, these are, like I said, three-part three part mausoleums. We have the base, which is really simple. It's just going to have a stair. Each one of them has a pair of stairs that go up. All right, it slides Basically, the, the building itself, and the building does have a bottom, so I could use it without if I wanted to. But it just slides up there, really simple like that. Obviously, I'll glue it on. Might even drill a hole or two to pin that bad boy through the bottom. Right? Secure it up, make it nice and neat. And then we've got a roof, right? This is the most basic roof out of all of them. I'll show you all the roofs. But this is the most basic one, and it's just a flat-topped roof. I'll probably drill a couple of holes and do um, maybe just a couple of guide pins on the inside so I can use them as removable roofs. That would make the most sense to me. And we've got this roof here. Um, I know there's a specific name to the style of this roof, but I don't remember what it is and I really don't care. But as you can see, we've got details on the front, details on the rear. Now this is probably one of the, the cooler frontages. We've got some columns you know, on the side. We've got nice, clean details. A couple of cherubs on the back. I mean, it's it's a fun little piece. This whole graveyard set actually is really fun, uh, especially for as old as it is. The standard, you know, it does look like a wood slat roof. Right, we got a goofy ass goblin up front, and really kind of just an overgrown mess in the back. Again, more gargoyle slash goblins on the front. This is your classic stone, right? There we've got a, a good mosaic on the back. The knights fighting the dragon. Arr! And then finally, for the fourth piece in this series, 
This is the second most basic roof, right? Because it is the same roof, just with a little added flare to the top. A couple of fleur-de-lis there on the side. But this one is pretty sweet, right? It's got a big-ass cross and a lot of fleur-de-lis on the inside. A badass lion. Some crazy-ass design on the back. Another badass lion. And then some simple but beautiful details on the front. So this is a great set, mainly because it comes with a ton of stuff. We'll sweep these out of the way and set those back up in a minute. But we have all of this extra awesomeness, right? So we've got gates that have bases, right? The bases pretty much just have a slot where these slide into. It's really simple, really easy. It'll go together really quick. Right, we've got doors to our mausoleums. Those will all get stuck on there. Right, we got the sunshine. That one's pretty cool. Looks like a brooch. And the other one, it's really simple, really basic. Just a set of bars over a wooden door. Got a couple of columns. Right, columns are cool. Everybody likes columns. I don't know. And then a couple of those crazy ass gargoyles. Right, look at those guys, goofy bastards. So these will either go on the columns, maybe, maybe not, or they might go um, up here. It makes sense, right? Who knows? I'll figure it out. I'll get it all put together. We've got our gate for up front. We have to bend some pins because that's what happens. And it probably goes into place. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Look at that. Yes, I did just get a text message. Deal with it. Yes, I just got another one. Deal with it as well. So yeah, there we go. Pretty sick. Pretty solid. I dig it. And then last but not least, let's we'll sweep this stuff out of the way because it's going to be a mess. We have a ton of gravestones, right? And by a ton, I mean like probably 25 or 30. Multiple different styles, right? Big cross on a column there. These are kind of cool. And as you can see, this is the first time I've opened the bag, so the first time I've really actually taken a look at them. But I probably just make one base of graves, maybe two, right? So just so you're all aware, I will make bases for everything out of creosote, right? Which is this textured on one side, five, uh, flat fiberboard on the other. Um, it does have another name. Uh, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but you can get this at Home Depot or Michael's Craft Store. You can get it in a 2x2 two two or a 2x4. I generally buy it in a 2x4 sheet. It costs me a couple of bucks. And uh, it is, in my opinion, the best material for making bases for scenery, right? So um, I will make bases for everything. But like I said, in this case, I will probably just do a couple of random bases of multiple gravestones and have a nice little graveyard set up with those. So I'm going to clean this up really quick, put everything back where it was, and we'll take a look at that uh, Gardens and More box. So for the, I don't know, three or four of you guys that haven't seen what's in the box of the Garden and More, we'll take a quick look at the sprues. So there really are only four sprues in this set. You've got two of these base sprues, which give you a pair of mausoleums, I would assume. You got the big wall sprue, right? This gives you kind of the, um, well, you got your, your big statue here, and then your front and back, and then you've got your base sprue, right? This is the sprue that everything goes on top of. Again, really simple and quick and easy. You know, there's your instructions. Hey, look, it goes together like that and like that, and woo, we're all done. Whoa, look at that garden and more. All right, so, all right, so I say that every once in a while. I cut down, but I used to say it a lot. As you can see, the Garden of Moor will be pretty simple to put together. because There's not a ton of pieces, right? I mean, we're talking half a dozen to eight on each sprue. There's four sprues. That's it. Man, that was boring. Okay. All right. Exciting. Garden of Moor. We'll take a look at uh, what next? Well, don't have a whole lot, but we'll take a look at my ruined church. All right, the quick and dirty. This is a resin church ruins set that I picked up oh, a long time ago, right? It was in a white box. I do recall that. I don't remember who made it. Uh, could be anyone from 
Well, I don't think it was Old Glory. In fact, I'm almost positive it wasn't Old Glory. Could have been Armor Cast. Maybe. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But like I said, it's been sitting around for such a long time. You can see how dirty it is. Right? I mean, that is dust through the ages. Primed black originally. It is five pieces, right? This left side wall is two pieces. Right side wall is a single piece. And the back is a single piece. But the detail is great. Right? It'll go on a simple base. I'll make some uh, craziness around it probably. Some skulls and skeleton type stuff. But simple, effective, quick piece. You know, I'm sure you guys have something similar to it. And, well, that's what I got to show you for this. Unless you guys want to see the Heralds. Right? These guys are great. They're fantastic. I haven't opened this this blister yet. So, <laughs> And then we've got these guys here. And, again, the Guardians of Eternity. Now, I've got, like, probably a dozen of these. So, by a dozen, I mean four of each. A few blister packs. All right. That is up close and personal with a good portion of my graveyard. Well, I guess I could show you these really quick. So I don't know where these came from, right? Like I said, my buddy Will, he did all the work on this stuff. And when he got out of War Machine, I just picked it all up from him. So nice and quick and simple graveyard. We used to play on it at his place, then it became mine. So we started playing on it at my place. Again, if you, uh, I'd say if you Google resin gravestones, you probably find these things. They're pretty cool, but it was just, like I said, a quick, simple, easy way to get a graveyard up and running. And that's what we did. All right, there it is. There it is. My graveyard project so far. We'll be right back with that wrap. And the wrap. Well, obviously I've got a lot of work ahead of me, right? Between setting it up and cutting out bases for everything. Um, again, like I said, I'm going to use creosote because it's probably my favorite quote unquote basing material or base making material for terrain. Um, everything will end up getting a, a base, right? Even probably the columns or the colonnades of the way that they're laid up. Or, you know, I may just do the same thing that was done here, get a bunch of 60 millimeter rounds and do the, the columns as little 60 millimeter you know, movable pieces. We'll see. And so, what do you guys think? Right, I'm curious as to what you guys, if you guys have a graveyard table, do you guys have a graveyard table? If so, what are you using that's comparable, right? What do you have that I'm missing? What should I add to this Titanic project? Nothing? Something? Right, there's some companies out there that I know that make some pretty cool stuff still. Um, there's some companies that don't make or made a limited run of stuff. Uh, tabletop World, right? They had this graveyard set that was fantastic. Oh, it was amazing. I wanted one. But, you know, it, it came and gone like some bad Chinese food, and you can't find them anymore. Trust me, I've tried. What is it, Minimonster.eu, I think? They make a couple of cool mausoleums. Um, they actually make some, some really cool base resin elements that I may pick up and uh, take a look at, review at a later time. We'll see. But, as a whole... What do you guys think I'm missing? Anything? Anything at all? I don't think I'm missing anything. This is going to be a lot of work. It's a big project. And I think I've got plenty to make a really sweet 4x4. Four four. Um, may not necessarily be 4x6, right, with everything all clustered together. But a spread out 4x6, without a doubt. Um, don't play on a 4x8, so I don't care. But I'll use it for everything that I play, right? For whether or not I'm playing Age of Sigmar, right? I've got my Flesh Eater Quartz here. I've got the, uh, the Flesh Eater Quartz Iron Box. I've got the starter box, right? This is a ghoul, the uh, King Vlorga Rescues ghoul ho or ghoulish host, and I probably destroyed that last or his last name, but I don't care because he's dead. Eden, right? I'll play some Eden on it. Batman. Oh, dude, 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 Batman. Anybody got a scarecrow crew? Y'all want to come over and play some scarecrow action in the graveyard? How freaking awesome would that be? That'd be cool. I dig it, right? I got plenty of stuff over there to play uh, between. Um, Wrath of Kings, right? I've got, I've got my Garici army that I'm actually over there, but I'm rebuilding it. I've got some Warzone stuff right here. Uh, I've got Relic Knights over there, building the Shattered Sword. Um, I've got Project Everything down here, right? So, I mean, there's, I can use this table for any game that I play. Any game. Makes no difference. Everybody plays in the graveyard. 
right? Everybody. I did it when I was 13. I'm sure you did too. Couple that with the fact that, well, you know, it's just a cool place to have a battle. So, Project Graveyard. Long time coming, like I said. Probably going to take a while to finish because it is a ton of work. Now, I've got two or three other projects that are literally right in the middle of being in the works that are going to prevent me from jumping into this, say, like later tonight. But it'll be on the horizon here pretty soon. We'll see updates. We'll do a couple of videos on, uh, you know, painting them quick and dirty, right? Stonorens, the gray primer, that's how we'll prime the mausoleums. Probably most of the, of the stuff that is made of stone. Maybe even the, uh, the church, I don't know. This will probably get a, a darker color scheme to it, right? It's a burnt down, kind of old, dilapidated. Well, there you know, old, kind of about it. It is old and dilapidated. But again, all of this stuff should paint up really quick and easy. Shoot it with my Patriot 105, Stattle Rens Prime, do a couple of quick highlights, um, add some washes, you know, the greens and the blues and some browns, make it some old and nasty, uh, add some, some ivy, right, add some moss, add some, um, I don't know, random growing stuff, and boom, we got a graveyard and we're ready to roll. So I'll probably do a video that shows, you know, I don't know, the mausoleum or one of the mausoleums, quick and dirty paint job. And, I don't know, maybe something out of the Garden of Moore. Who knows? We'll see. Haven't planned it. It is going to be a fly-by-the-seat-of-my-pants kind of project. But I enjoy those the most. All right. As always, if you have comments or something to say, post it below. You know I'll answer. Thank you once again for listening to me ramble. And, oh, man, I guess we'll catch you on the next round. I'm out. Ha, 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 ha.